Please be seated. This past Wednesday, I was back in the office after two weeks of vacation. I spent it in Chicago where, believe it or not, I did not watch TV, I did not surf social media sites, and in the hardest thing for me to avoid, I didn't listen to NPR. I simply read, rode my bike, walked, and sat on the beach. And yes, Chicago's got some great urban beaches. Now, by last Sunday morning, as I was sitting in a pew at a church in Chicago, I was calmer than I had been in ages. Then midday Sunday took place. Now, here's the story. I like to bike to new places when I'm on vacation, and this time I decided to go to a new national monument that is on the far south side of Chicago. It would first entail a 20-minute trip with my bike on an elevated L train down through a neighborhood where, on an adjacent line about three months ago, a college student was killed when a stray bullet from outside the car came into the moving car and hit him. Now, knowing that fact raised my anxiety a little bit. What I wanted was for the trip to get over with as quickly as possible without incident and without my, my, my having to make eye contact with anybody. Now, on the train, it ended up that I was the only person in the car wearing a mask. I was holding on to my bike that I had dragged up and down stairs at the station. Someone ahead of me was vaping. One guy had a half-full, half-pint bottle in his hand, and one entrepreneur had set up a drug dispensary in the front of the car. He was very professional. He had on latex gloves while dispensing and then took them off when he finished. My increasingly urgent prayer was for a quick trip. Just as the doors were closing at one of the, stop, one of the stops, it happened. A woman in a mobility scooter on the train suddenly decided that she wanted off. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details, except simply know that there was a lot of yelling on the part of a lot of people. She was screaming more and more into both the intercom and to anybody who would listen. There were several missed opportunities easily to get her, get her over the small gap from the car to the platform, and there ended up being a 15-minute interruption in service. If you've forgotten that someone might be a bullet's target in a moving train, think about an L train that stopped on the tracks. I was wanting to get somewhere as fast as possible without incident, and this very loud woman interrupted everything. The real world was interrupting my idea of what the world ought to be like. Amid my frustration, and I'm going to admit my own fear, I finally swallowed my own pride, pushed back my own impatience, and admitted that I had something to learn. This 21st century woman was living out today's reading from the book of Proverbs, in which the wisdom woman interrupts everyone's important business by standing on the busiest corner of the street and yelling out her message. She's going to interrupt people and make them feel uncomfortable. Now, in that Holy Scripture is still speaking to us, this woman on an L car can make us feel uncomfortable as well. There's always someone whose calling is to upset the status quo and force us to look at things in a new light, push us toward being transformed ourselves. Now, we probably need some background on why this piece of writing in the book of Proverbs made it into Holy Scripture. Some writers say that the wisdom woman was introduced as a feminine image of the divine in a world in which the images of God were very male and, well, somewhat distant. Even in Jerusalem, where God supposedly lived, God was not out on the street among people. God was literally tucked away somewhat safely in the temple's holy of holies in a box behind a curtain. That location had some practical benefits. It allows people to avoid God. Physical distance and someone behind a curtain have their advantages. You know, think about how you would compare the severity of a curse word said in this room versus that same word said at home. 
or the types of clothing we think appropriate in this room versus on the beach. There is an advantage to having God contained somewhere else. We're not confronted. But by golly, in steps God, in steps the woman on the street in the book of Proverbs, and not just any woman. She's at the busiest street corner in the city, at the city gate, we are told. It's at the very place where economic and judicial life of a Middle Eastern community would have taken place. Here is a woman who's calling to take to task merchants and judges, buyers and sellers, people suing and people being sued. And well, I guess if we're to listen to Holy Scripture still in this generation, she's calling out to perhaps bishops holding onto their bicycles. I bet that wisdom woman was about as popular as my fellow L train rider who was forcing a halt to the business of the subway that everybody was about. She made people uncomfortable, just as wisdom often makes people uncomfortable. Now, by placing the story of this wisdom woman and her injunctions in Holy Scripture, the prophets and sages of our religious heritage are telling us that God steps into our lives when we are so busy with getting what we want done and calls us to task when we forget or ignore the ordinary and the hurting and the forgotten. Unlikely characters are being called to make us uncomfortable. Well, it's not an image of God that we like very much. I know that I want people to feel comfortable when they come to church. I've always been asking the question, how can you meet the newcomer's needs? Well, God may be telling me that I'm asking the wrong question. Perhaps we're not here to meet our members' needs, but perhaps we are instead here to transform ourselves Perhaps we are here so that we can stop on our journey of wherever we are going and be reminded about what it's like when the divine will not be safely stored in a religious house, but when the divine is seen in the ordinary activities of life, when the divine is seen in the lives of hurting and forgotten people. We must sometimes listen to that woman on the L train and be made to feel uncomfortable. What's the world yelling at us from the street corner? Well, sometimes I must ask myself, what are people who've suffered from generations of racial injustice trying to tell me when they talk about loans that can't be made and being stopped by the police? Or just as importantly, what are some of the anti-vaxxers subconsciously trying to tell us? Those two questions make me squirm because I'm beginning to see that in both cases, we are dealing with people who have been hurt and forgotten. Now, when we start pushing the church closer to the very busy intersections of our world where economic and judicial decisions are being made, we might be surprised at what we start to hear. I'm beginning to understand that the world needs to have unlikely voices commenting on our behavior as a society. Now, why do we in the world need to be changed? Well, look at what Jesus has to say. He's another voice that cries out that things are not right. He tells us in today's gospel that if we really want to know what it's like to live, we're going to give up our lives as, we, as we've always known them. Now, that's hard for me to hear. The competition to be first, to have the most, to be the person who always comes out on top, that sense is strong in me. It leads to wanting more and more, but I know there's no way ultimately to satisfy that need. And so living, I become imprisoned. So why not go ahead and give up what I've so desperately held on to and see what might set me free? You know, in some ways, Jesus today is preaching a stewardship sermon. Start living differently by being outwardly focused and we'll find life as we've never known it. I keep going back and trying to learn a lesson from that woman in a mobility scooter on an L train in Chicago. She interrupted my life. Her needs, her story, well, they're so different from mine. But her story is really so ordinary, and that scene is so common. 
He taught me that others carry burdens that I find bothersome, but to them are enormous. How can I lessen such burdens in the future? She taught me that I'm not the center of the universe. Sometimes the world's got to slow down and make way for the least and the last. That's a message that every one of us must learn if we're to find some peace in this journey that we call life. Sometimes we've just got to lose our own desires if we wish to gain life. Jesus and the wisdom woman in Proverbs and the woman yelling from the scooter seat. Well, they've all got good news for us. If we'll but take time to listen, take time to watch, and take time to change. Amen.